Hello, my name is Ann Holden, and I would like to talk about the idea behind my iNaturalist story map project. So for this, I use the app iNaturalist, which is used for scientific research and documents, pictures and descriptions of organisms around the user's area. And I did this in several locations, including Chicago, Illinois, Frankfort, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, and Bowling Green, Kentucky. In Chicago, Illinois, I found the common reed, and this was alongside a highway. And then I went to Louisville, Kentucky, and I saw several different species in the central park of that area, including the ivy-leaved speedwell, some clovers, the lesser calendine, and some other species. Then I went to the Preston S. Miller Park in Bowling Green, Kentucky. There I saw a wild common grape hyacinth along the side of a parking lot. I also saw a Virginia Spring Beauty, which is a white flower, and a Christmas fern, which was actually in the bank of Jennings Creek, which is in Preston Miller Park. Then I went to the Chuck Croom Nature Park in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and I saw monocots. I also went to a horse farm in Warren County, Kentucky, and I saw a bark and ambrosia beetle, which is still in the subfamily category and hasn't been fully classified. On campus at the Western Kentucky University, I saw several species as well. This included the American cockroach, a worm-like organism, which is only classified as insects so far and is in its class. Then I also saw a white lip, some pulmonates, and um, also a turkey tail, which is a fungus that I saw along the side of a tree, some silvery bryum, which is a type of moss, a shaggy mane, which is a type of mushroom, some pincushion moss, uh, and a common pill bug. Also around this same area, I saw a prickly sow thistle, which is a prickly type of plant. And I saw that near the business college. And then I went for a walk around some of the neighborhoods around campus. And I saw an eastern white pine, as well as green shields, which is a type of lichen found on dead wood. Some anemodon moss, which is another species of moss and also some cypress-leaved plate moss. I also saw some cut-leaf burnweed, which is another type of ground plant, some candle flame lichen on the side of a tree, some rockweed, and some other different species. Now, finally, I went to Frankfort, Kentucky, which is my hometown, and I looked at some species that I found there. Near the wooded area, I saw some junipers. And I also saw some thistles, which are only in their genus and haven't been classified down to the species. And finally, I saw an eastern gray squirrel, which has actually been added to one of the projects on iNaturalist, which has to do with bird feeders. Finally, my last observation was back in Bowling Green and I saw a greater lady beetle near the parking structure. And in a minute, I will talk about my favorite part of this project, which was identifying fungi. And I will talk about how scientists go about identifying different types of fungi. 
Today, I'd like to talk about the different ways to identify species, especially the different classes. So there's the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And that's going from the most general classification to the least general classification. And this is how a naturalist classifies everything that you put into it. And people can go into your observation and make it more specific or less specific as they see fit. So with my observations, I'm going to go through and talk about the numbers of each, each way that you identify a species, each classification. And I'm going to tell, talk about how broad all of my observations are in general. So first, there's the kingdom. I have one observation for that, and it's kingdom plantae. I also have one observation in a phylum. I have nine observations for class, five of which are actually class magnoliposita. And then I have one that's an infraclass, and it's pulmonata. Then I have one which is in an order. I have, in a family, I have two families. They're both Poaceae. In subfamily, I have two observations. In genus, I have 19 observations. And for species, I have 64 observations, making a total of 100 observations. Now, as for the different types of organisms discovered, I found five animals, two different types of mollusks, 77 different types of plants, eight insects, and eight fungi, including lichens. And during this project, I have specifically been interested in the identification of different species of fungi. And here are the, some of the ways that fungi can be classified. Macroscopic features to look for when you're identifying a fungi include the shape of the fruiting body or the cap of the mushroom, the color of the mushroom and of their gills, the length of their gills, whether they connect to the stem or if they are disconnected from the stem, and also the growth patterns of multiple types of mushrooms. And when you're looking at lichens, especially the ones I found in my project, you want to look at the shape of those, the growth patterns, and the color. For microscopic features of fungi, you want to look at the spore walls and also the patterns in which the spores germinate.